Welcome to Ruby on Rails webinar series. Uh, I hope everyone has a great holiday. So today's topic is HAML. HAML stands for HTML Abstraction Markup Language. So let's start with presentation. So we'll talk about what is and why you want to use HAML. And uh, then we are going to spend some time learning HAML basic syntax. Uh, it has a very simple syntax. And we are going to see how HAML could be used with Rails. I have to actually add L here. And then we're going to see how we can convert existing ELB template files to HAML template files. And we are going to see also how you can generate HAML files as a default template. So what is and why HAML? So HAML stands for HTML Abstraction Markup Language, as I said. And it is a templating engine for HTML. And it is designed to make HTML uh, creation easier and more pleasant than writing HTML document yourself. Uh, so it eliminates redundancy in HTML. So in HTML, every tag has to have opening tag and ending tag, and that's a redundancy. And uh, it doesn't also, HTML, uh, HTML document does not reflect the underlying structure. So you could have everything is aligned in the uh, first uh, the column, and it's hard to see the structure of the HTML document. So that's another problem of HTML document. And the syntax of HTML is not as clean as it could be. So another reason for HTML, uh, HAML is to provide elegant syntax that's powerful and easy to understand. So you'll see examples of this in a few seconds. And HAML is a popular alternative to ELB. So many Rails developers are using HAML as a default template rather than using ELB, which is a default template if you're not using HAML. So HAML principles, the design principles of HAML is again, markup should be beautiful. So it simplifies template creation. So instead of writing HTML tags, you are going to use HAML syntax, which is a lot simpler to use. And it provides a cleaner and more readable and easier, create, easier to create syntax. Again, uh, it's designed to follow dry principle of Rails. Don't repeat yourself again. Uh, HTML and XHTML are too repetitive. Uh, again, the same example I talked about. Every element has opening and ending tag, and that's a duplication. And markup should be well indented. So in HAML, space is providing some meaningful syntax, meaningful semantics. Uh, so in HTML, space doesn't play any role. In HAML, it plays a role of uh, the, uh, the uh, nesting. So we'll see examples of that. All right, so let's move on with a basic syntax. So you're going to use a percent sign for specifying a tag. So in HTML file, you're going to use, for example, title tag, opening title tag, and ending title tag. And uh, this is paragraph, uh, opening tag and ending tag. In HAML, you're going to just use a percent sign. So you say percent, and then you specify the contents of that tag. So here, uh, instead of opening tag P and ending tag P, you're going, you going to just say percent and hello. So there is no duplication of uh, title, as you see in HTML in HAML. Now, if you have attributes, for example, here is a tag, and this is the uh, class attribute and ID attribute, then you can specify those attributes in the form of Ruby hash, like this. Okay, uh, This one, you don't have to. So this is uh, the, uh, the class and ID. And uh, you can use the uh, more up-to-date syntax, for example, class colon and that uh, value and ID colon and message. Okay, So that's actually a new way of actually specifying hashes. So this is good enough as well. So basically, idea of uh, specifying HTML attributes, tag attributes are specified as Ruby hash like this. Now, class attribute and ID attributes are special. Okay, so since you are using class attribute and ID attribute in most of your HTML tags, uh, HAML has a special uh, syntax for that. So class attribute, you can specify with a dot. So in this case, the class attribute of code, you can specify with a dot notation, dot code. So this part means this class attribute. For ID attribute, you're going to use a pound sign. Okay, 
So class and ID attributes are special, so they are rep represented in Hamel as a dot and pound sign. So if you reverse these two, then you can specify with a pound message and dot code. So, you know, it could be reversed. Now, another special syntax uh, that is commonly used in Hamel is a div. So, you know, divs are very common in HTML and XHTML document. Uh, you don't have to specify percent sign for div. So this HTML document, you can certainly specify with percent div because div is a tag. Okay. However, div can be omitted here. So this is the same thing as this. So when there is nothing in front of dot, so this dot is contents and attribute, right? So content attribute here. Uh, if you don't have anything, that is assumed to have uh, div. Okay, so all these are the same thing. So this is the HTML syntax. This is Hamel syntax number one, and this is Hamel syntax number two, and this is more preferred, and this is the example you see in most Hamel documents. Okay. Nesting is done by white spaces. So in Hamel, the white, double white spaces, two white spaces means a nested element. Okay. So in Hamel document, you have to follow this rule. Every nested element should have two white spaces in front of it. So make sure that you are not using tab. Uh, instead, you should use the uh, two white spaces. So in this case, we have G and with, and then we have a content of this. So we have a nested element, and these nested structure will be represented by Hamel with the two white spaces. First, percent G representing this element, this tag, and then width is nested version, a nested element inside the G element, so that you should have a two white spaces. And here, same thing. Okay. So again, uh, white spaces mean something in HTML document, and in HTML document, white spaces doesn't mean that much. Again, here, you know, you could have this width you know, without any spaces. So that's the reason what I said in the beginning of this presentation in HTML document, it's very difficult to, 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 to see the structure. Here it is well structured. You can see things, uh, you know, the width is inside the G, but you don't have to have these white spaces here. Uh, so it's sometimes it's very hard to see the structure of HTML document. In Hamel, because you have to have these two, two white spaces, uh, you can see the structure very easily. Okay, mixed with, HTML, mixed with HTML. So if you happen to have a very large HTML document, you do not want to convert every uh, HTML tag to HTML, then you can mix things. So here, if you have HTML document like this, and if you want to convert just this P tag, then you're going to use a percent %P, and then you can leave the rest of it as it is. Okay, so this is perfectly okay HTML document, you know, HTML syntax. It's understood by HTML. Okay. So you can change existing HTML document incrementally. Now there are conversion tools available. So you can convert uh, existing HTML document to HTML, and you can also convert HTML to HTML to see uh, how it looks like. Okay. So we are going to use, in fact, the uh, for HTML to HTML, there are two different tools. One is online tool uh, from Heroku, and uh, you can also use HTML to HTML command line tool. Uh, for Hamel to HTML, you can use a Hamel command line tool. All right, so let's do exercise one and two. So exercise one is converting HTML to Hamel, and exercise two is converting Hamel to HTML. So let's go to this lab documentation. So exercise one, we are going to use this uh, Hamel online converter. So that's what I have here. So I'm going to just move this one right here. And we are going to convert uh, this. So this is strong tag with uh, class attribute code and ID attributed message, and the contents is hello world. Okay. So we're going to just copy this one, and we are going to copy here HTML. Then you say convert. Then it's going to convert uh, to a Hamel syntax. Okay. So here you have a percent sign with a strong tag, and then message uh, is an ID. And then code is uh, class. Okay. Now let's convert this div element. Okay. So we are going to convert this one. So again, this is the same thing that we have seen in the slide. Copy this one and convert. So here 
you don't see any div okay but uh, so dot this is the uh, content which is the uh, class attribute and then hello world is the uh, content and here we are going to convert the nested elements so here again this is the same example that we have seen in the slide so copy here and then convert and you can see uh, these two white spaces between uh, the uh, four nested element as we have learned okay. now we are going to convert so here so far we are converting just HTML fragment to uh, HAML uh, fragment here we're going to convert the whole uh, HTML document so here uh, we are going to convert this whole thing and convert so as expected this is what you get now you're going to see this bang 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 you know that's basically representing this doc type okay and you can see HTML is represented by this body which is nested inside HTML is represented by percent body but it does have a two white spaces okay and the form element is form and the action attribute is again represented as Ruby hash Okay, oops, Ruby hash. Okay, and uh, then we have a first name again nested with the two uh, white spaces, and again input. Okay, so input is represented by percent sign, and again hash, uh, Ruby hash. Okay, so you can see things are very simple. Okay, all right. So here we are going to convert another HTML uh, page, HTML document to. Uh, so this is the case that we are converting HTML page that contains this the uh, uh, UL element. Okay, so UL element has the uh, line item, uh, the item here. So let's convert this. So this is uh, on ordered list. Convert. Okay, so the conversion is HTML body and UL, and again everything is nested. Okay, and it's a lot easier to see, you know, this UL contains li, line, you know, items underneath, and this uh, like this item contains a T, and it has its own UL. Okay. All right. The next one is a table. So this is the case that HTML document that contains a table. So we are going to convert this uh, HTML document that contains a table and convert okay and as expected uh, you know we have uh, this HTML body and the h4 element and then table and the rows okay and we have another table here so pretty straightforward all right exercise two is now we are going to convert HTML document to HTML, a HAML document to HTML. So using this online document, uh, we were converting from uh, HTML to HAML. So we're going to actually do the reverse. Okay. Now you are going to install HAML gem. So what you're going to do is you're going to say gem install HAML, which I've done already. Okay. And uh, once you have done that, then you're going to actually see uh, these are uh, the uh, utilities, HAML and HTML to HAML utilities in your bin directory of Ruby. Okay, so again, I have done that this one already. Okay. Now you can use now HAML, uh, the command line utility or HTML to, by the way, so the, this HTML to HAML, this is a command line utility that converts HTML to HAML. Okay, so you know, you can certainly do uh, convert uh, HTML to HAML. Uh, either using this online tool or using this uh, this uh, command line tool. Okay, so here we're gonna just do use Haml, which is converting Haml to uh, the uh, the uh, um, um, HTML. Okay, so you can just use Haml help, and uh, one uh, option uh, that you can specify is uh, whether you want to convert uh, the uh, Haml to either HTML4 document or HTML5 document. Okay. Uh, this one is again HTML to HAML. Okay. Uh, so here you can actually parse ELP tags. 
So what you're going to do is we are going to actually go to uh, this uh, HTML files. So I provided some example HTML files. In fact, I just copied this HTML files into the lab documentation. So uh, lab hands on lab file. So I'm going to just go to uh, HL and HAML. And I'm going to go to HTML file. So I provided this uh, HAML files that I captured in exercise one. Okay. So here we're going to actually just 